My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. There is a beautiful old hymn, probably not sung that much now, that we used to sing often in seminary. It's an Easter hymn. I won't uh, suffer you the indignity of having to listen to me singing it. But the the words are, are beautiful. The language may be a little bit archaic by today's sensibilities. But the verse, I think it's the opening verse, goes like this. Battle is o'er, hell's armies flee. Raise we the cry of victory. With a binding chorus sounding, Alleluia, Alleluia. And Jesus, those sentiments that are in that hymn echo in my heart whenever I read the gospel today. Battle is o'er, hell's armies flee. Because we are really celebrating the resurrection on all this Easter season, but in the in the gospel today, this is really what, what comes very vividly to my mind. The last words that you speak to us today in the gospel of Jesus in John uh, chapter 16, verse 20, I tell you most solemnly, you will be weeping and wailing while the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn to joy. Now for me, Jesus, I can think quite readily of the experience of Good Friday. For us who believe, when we celebrate Good Friday, it's, it's more than just a kind of a liturgical celebration. We go with you to Calvary, Jesus, and we're very conscious that it's our sins that have brought you there. And when we read that sacred passion on the day of Good Friday and, and pray the, the Stations of the Cross, this kind of moment of intense suffering, more than really we can imagine, it, it pierces our own hearts too to think of how much you suffered for us jesus who are the great lover of our souls and and though we say we love you jesus and um, whenever we are confronted on good friday with the reality of our sinfulness it it pains us and it shames us in truth that our sins have caused you this this horrible death and that's the moment of the devil to rejoice that uh, that we sin that uh, that we're weak that we give into temptation and that the son of god dies upon the holy cross and we think of the intense suffering that you had in that moment jesus and and your and your mother especially thinking of those those holy people who had come to jerusalem to to see you and to get a glimpse of you on, on that day of, of horror whenever you were led through the streets of Jerusalem, that your blood mingled with the, the wood of the cross. And for people of faith then and now, that is a horrible thought, that the Lord died, that the Lord would suffer. But how the demons rejoice at that, to see holiness itself, that you, God, who became flesh for us, suffering and inflicted by terrible wounds by us, by humanity, by sinful people. But that is the great battle which is ended upon the cross. Whenever, Jesus, we look at the crucifix, we see you who are pierced for our iniquity, that you took upon yourself all of our suffering. And so this moment of weeping and wailing, which is, which is a big part of Good Friday and which we experience whenever we, we reflect upon our sinfulness, it is the moment of rejoicing of the demons and the evil one. But how fleeting that is. Because when you died and rose again, you defeated the evil one and you defeated death itself in order to give us life, eternal life happiness with you in this life and eternally in the next and that when we are baptized whenever we become your soldiers christ nothing can wrestle us from your hand 
because you have died and you rose again. And despite any lie that the devil or temptation might whisper gently into our ear, we cannot rejoice with the world because we are rejoicing with you. We cannot rejoice with all of those on Good Friday who, who are ignorant of your suffering and death, who don't celebrate it in any way, who don't have any remorse for their own sinfulness at all. And that's their moment, maybe, when they rejoice with a little smile, even for themselves in that moment. But on Easter Sunday, when we celebrate that moment of the resurrection, right from the Easter vigil, our hearts are filled with joy, even though we're usually exhausted by the time that uh, the Easter vigil comes round after intense days of, of prayer and fasting. But in our, in our exhaustion, there is real concrete joy. And, and we have to recover that, even though we're, we're weeks after the big celebration of Easter. We recover that joy. In the parish where I live, the Romanian Orthodox community, they, they celebrate their Mass here on a Sunday. And because their calendar is slightly different from ours, they were celebrating Easter this Sunday past. And it was really nice, actually, to see Orthodox Christians coming, coming here to pray, to celebrate Easter. And to remember that, OK, six weeks ago, that was us. And to say, Happy Easter, Happy Easter. And they were so filled with joy to say it back. Happy Easter, Happy Easter. To recover something of that, that great victory when our sorrow turned into joy. I also last week, I was at a very sad funeral of a young lady who tragically died, really at the prime of her life. And she was a young woman who I got to know really in the context of her, of her sickness. Though her life was, was so much more than her sickness. She had a very debilitating disease that she had suffered from birth. But in truth, it, it did not define her. She was a, a woman of, of deep and loving faith. And she gave life, really, in, in everything that she did. I met her in the context of, of her being in the hospital, where she suffered a lot. But she never complained about it. In fact, she was always talking about different aspects of, of her life that, that were going on. And her faith too, her faith in the, in the healing power of Jesus. She lived her life, though it was very short, to the full. And she was a medical doctor and she had the chance to, to help many people with, with her study and with her, her tender compassion, with her, with her medical knowledge. She was a, a loving wife also. And she gave life to, to her husband and to, to, to her whole family to celebrate that, that joy. And tragically, she gave birth to a little boy just a few weeks ago. But it was, it was too much for her, her body. And she, she died shortly after. But the, the deacon that preached beautifully at her funeral spoke about how her whole life was about giving life. And even in her death, she gave life. She gave life to her, to her son. And though it was a, a sad funeral because this woman had given so much in life, and even though it was very short, and on the face of it, we say she had so much more life to, to live and to enjoy. She was born into eternal life. And though there was sorrow, most certainly deep sorrow in that church, there was also joy that she was rejoicing in heaven because she was faithful to the promises that, that she had made to you, Jesus, and that she was a firm believer in the, the gift of eternal life that you offer to each one of us in the Eucharist but also from the Holy Cross. And so whilst her, her life was certainly marked with the cross, with sorrow, with her illness, her death was marked with, with joy in the resurrection. That she is born into eternal life, Lord Jesus, with you, I am, I am sure. Because of her faith, because of her love, and because of her trust in you. And so this is when our, our sorrow is turned into joy, through faith, through the cross, that you take our sorrow away from us, Jesus, upon the Holy Cross whenever you died in order to give us new life and to give us the chance of eternal life. And so we say again, even though it's weeks after, Happy Easter. And to celebrate and to live in this joy of Easter because battle is o'er and hell's armies flee. Jesus, you have won the victory. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me during this meditation. 
I ask your help to put them into effect. My mother immaculate, Saint Joseph, my father and lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.